first production of our second one, so we moved into a place that we called the Old Piggeries, it wasn't on the pig farm, uh, that we converted um, in West Oak. And then some of our really early branding, which um, I would say Simon creates, Simon having been a lawyer, um, I discovered was actually quite good at design. I mean, it might not look like it now. <laughs> but they, he produced all the designs for all of our products. Um, and what I find amusing is that you can pay thousands and thousands for design agencies or branding agencies to create a, a brand for you. And we just did it on the, literally on the back of a you know, fact packet. Because if you present something to a customer and they like it, then they almost kind of accept that that is the brand. And so if any of you are going around kind of thinking, I need to create a brand, or I need to create logos or names or designs for products, then yeah, try, just try to be authentic and genuine about what you're trying to achieve and what you're trying to show your customers. We've got loads wrong. You know, we've got loads wrong when you can get over it, as long as it's not going to break the business. Um, and we did go through a massive rebrand uh, a few years ago where everything became a lot more uniform. And um, while I love it, I would just obviously show you if I bought any products, while I do love it, what I don't love is that it now lacks that kind of eclectic mix of, you know, kind of a bit of fun, you know, sort of all products there, all with quite different branding. You wouldn't necessarily know they're from the same brand. Um, but I love them all. Um, so, fast forward to 2018. Uh, we did, I mean, it's easy to kind of gloss over quite a few years and kind of say, yeah, they were all fine. Actually, they weren't. They were all, there were lots of ups and downs. We did grow a lot more, but that's our shopping, that's the shopping scripts that, that we have, which is our phone, sadly. And that is our place in Verdon, um, which, yeah, was a shell at the time. It's, it still is a pretty ropey old building, but we've now got a huge building down the Verdon <coughs> Strait, which is where our factory and our head office is. So um, we have, um, yeah, grown a lot. And obviously, when your sales grow, you have to kind of match it with your manufacturing capacity. So it's quite difficult because you, you always need that cash for something. Um, but nevertheless, we got there and we're still getting there. But in 2018, so Simon and I had been running the business for 18 years. Um, we felt like we'd reached the end of our. Ex I would call it expertise. We never had any expertise because we weren't business people, but we'd kind of made up a lot as we were going along. Um, and you'll find that as your businesses grow, you, you just learn so much and you learn the detail of what you're doing um, and you understand the, you know, the real minutiae of the, the business that you're building. Um, but in doing that, you're kind of working so, in so much detail in the business that you're not kind of, you know, you need a more of a a strategic helicopter view of the business sometimes to work out actually what its future is. Um, and we felt after 18 years we needed to bring in a bit of expertise, a bit of um, help to grow the business more because you know we'd grown to a 10 million pound business and we knew that there was so much more out there that we could go for but we actually we didn't really have much experience of working in Tesco, for example, and we knew that it was a bit of a minefield. So we wanted to bring in some help with that. Um, to do that, we needed a bit of a bit more investment into the business. Um, and then, actually, at the time, after 18 years, we thought we needed to secure our financial futures because when you, when it's your business, we owned it all, and um, you've never. Um, sold any equity in the business, so we'd grown up with the business part, not taking much out. Um, and at some point, we were going to have to kind of make succession plans and work out who was going to run the business in the future and how we were going to take some money out of it. Um, so, with all those things combined, we actually went out to the market and tried to find some like minded investors, which is maybe a bit of an oxymoron. <laughs> So trying to find investment for a small business like that is a game, um, it's hard, and trying to find the right ones is really difficult. 
um, how it works. We did find some. We used a corporate finance firm um, in London to kind of, it was a bit like speed, a bit like speed dating. So they went out to the market and spoke to, I mean, mad, it seemed mad to me that they spoke to people like Mars um, to see if they wanted to try the business out right. And then they spoke to lots of investment firms to see if they wanted to take a share in the business and bring in some expertise at the same time. Um, and after about 20 different speaking meetings, um, which were pretty highly business, you know, we ended up with a really cool, um, really cool, really nice private equity firm called Indley. And they invested a lot of money into the business. Uh, we took Simon and I, they bought some of our shares out of the business, so we were able to kind of squirrel that away, secure our futures. Um, and um, they then had lots of plans to kind of work out where we were going to grow. What we did was we sold the majority share. Um, so some people will never sell the majority of their business because in doing that you lose, basically you lose control. Um, but at the time Simon and I didn't want to carry on running the business. So we decided that if we were going to lose that control anyway, we would also be happy to lose the majority share um, in, in the control, basically. So it's quite complex. There's a lot of decisions to be made at the time. Um, we think, we still think we made the right decision. <laughs> it, it's been a really interesting journey since they invested in the business, because obviously not everything's been rosy since then. We've had COVID, Brexit has hit not long before, then we had COVID, now we've had Ukraine, so the supply has increased, it's really tough, now we've got a cost of living crisis, so it's not been an easy journey in the last four years. And, and if anyone wants to talk about the ins and outs, or the ups and downs of bringing investment into your business, <laughs> it might need a separate session. <laughs> but nevertheless, we're still here. I have worked in the business, in for a year or two over the last couple of years because um, I just took on a role when somebody went off on maternity leave, but I'm now not, I'm now taking that, I'm now not doing that. So I'm much more working as a non-executive director where we will just focus on the, str the strategy of the business because um, it needs it, it's, it's still really tough. So where are we now? So that's 